finally took the plunge and went for my first game at a local store. My opponent was a regular and I was stoked to see that my Imperial Ruin and Imperial Headquarters had become staple choices of terrain. You see, when the store first opened, they posted online seeking terrain, so I lent them everything I'd made up until then. All nice and chuffed that people liked my stuff, I decided to continue playing with the insulation foam and make something to mirror the Imperial Shrine I recently made so I could donate that as well. And if you want to see them in action, you can see both pieces in the battle report of the Leagues of Votan vs Hive Fleet Kraken. I've got a panel of thicker foam, so something a little more fortified, more chunky, maybe a fortress. But then I remembered a series of bottles for supplements I had chucked in my bits box. A factory, a munitions plant that requires extra dense walls to help contain the inevitable catastrophic explosion of its products. First, the exterior walls. I doodled the rough ragged line and cut it out so I can place them together and get an idea of the basic dimensions. Then, adding the bottles to where I think I'll drop them on the factory floor, and of course, a trio of pipes from my big old bag of pipes to feed into them, and a piece from the Emma's townhouse to act as a sort of catwalk across the top of them. This got me thinking about the more rules-orientated side of terrain. The catwalk will give this piece a level on which to place models at four and a half inches high, so I can add a floor above that, and another four and a half inches above that, allowing troops to travel between floors a little more feasibly. I cut out a section so the two walls mate together nicely. Then, marking out the windows. I was going to fill the larger face with lots of window openings, and then on the other side, a nice big honking door opening, about the right size so that the pillboxes would fit through it, so the factory could haul the containers out and bring fresh ones in. At this point, I changed my mind and opted against the lowest floor of windows. The factory floor will have simple square windows up by the ceiling to allow light in, but prevent people from peeking or easily breaking in. Plus, troops stationed on the catwalk have a clear line of sight straight out of the building. The floor above the factory floor will have larger arched openings because this is an office administration area. And then another floor, and this is the open rooftop. After cutting out the windows, I started dragging a screwdriver around to start making all those excellent gouged lines of battle damage and chipped away at the corners with a blade to get some nice notches. And I stabbed a pen into the walls to create bullet holes. Of course, a few lines of buttresses to be placed between the windows on the exterior. And then, using the thinner quarter-inch foam, I drew out and then cut out the two floors and then glued them into position with elbows. From the weird plastic toy rackets I snagged when they were in the bargain bin at Safeway, I cut out a line to act as a ladder to access the catwalk. Once it was free, an exacto along the outside removed the stumps and smoothed it out to look more laddery. That's not a word. Okay, let's make the bottles look less like bottles and more like industrial containers. First, a band of chipboard wrapped around the lid and super glued into position, and then an elastic band to hold it in place. And then a thinner strip of cardboard around the band to create another layer. Then a few strips of different lengths of cardboard cut out and then glued vertically along the bottles in various lengths and locations so that they look like lines of reinforcement or areas of repair, basically just to break up the blankness. On that topic, I added a buttress on the interior because there was an area of wall that looked a little too devoid of features. I have some solid plastic straws and cut one to the right length so I could chuck it in the corner. Snipping off some lengths of wooden barbecue skewers, I inserted the pointy end into the lower interior of the square windows of the factory floor to make a hole, took it out, then reversed it and pushed the pointy end into the upper interior, pushed it in move the bottom back into position and then retreat it to slot it back into the hole so that they look like bars. Some dabs of glue will help hold them in position and then when I paint it that should lock them in place. I glued the pipes into place and then onto the rivets. Breaking out the Chen Kao half beads I started dipping them in Elmer's and began adding them to the cardboard strip around the lid. And once all three lids had gained a circle of rivets, I added more along those vertical reinforcing bands. Also, 
the last bit from some custom pens that a rep brought into the office I was working at. I glued that to the middle of one of the bottle bases, sort of like a relief valve, some sort of additional safety feature or something. And then I gave everything a blast of matte black primer. The storage containers, the catwalk, the straws, the lot. And a quick instrumental break as I start cutting out some holes punched by artillery, carved lots of ragged lines of damage, cut out notches, and did that thing where you insert the exacto, cut along, and then bend backwards to pop out a nice shallow section. <laughs> I decided against the solid straws in the corner and opted to add them on the inside frame of the door to make it look a little less bland. Plus, because I decided to make the end section of wall detach from the structure, this will help hold everything in place and keep it more stable. Right, back to the half beads. And I added lines along the outside face of the buttresses just to give them a little more pep. Time to glue the structure down to a piece of chipboard using Elmer's, and then some lines of hot glue to provide additional sticking power. And then, squirting some pools of Elmer's along the base where it meets the walls, and then sprinkle on all those little bits that came away when I scraped and sliced and cut up the foam. I pushed them down so that they sunk into the glue, and while the piles of rubble dry, on to giving the machinery a nice dry brush of mythical silver catching the edges with a more distinct application and applying a more modest layer across the open surfaces. And now, on to painting. A squirt of black acrylic into the Mod Podge mixture from last time, which was quite pale from having done the final dry brush accents to the shrine. Stir it up, and then with a big fat brush, I started dabbing it all over. Once this was dry, a nice wash of black acrylic that I added into the deeper scars and the craters and the splits, and then I blended it out and around onto the surrounding surface to make a little less of a stark transition. And then, adding a squirt of white, stirred it up, and then started dry brushing all over to bring out the corners, the window and door frames, and the impact craters and the splits. While this dries, I decided to create some flair. Using this image that I found online, I added text and printed them up along with some posters that I glued to cardboard, so I could mount those on the walls. And I glued the signs straight onto the storage containers. I decided against munitions, and went with this being a chemical weapons plant. The factory floor was cooking up nasty goop until it was finally bombed into this ruined status. I think this calls for another instrumental break. <laughs> Okay, I had just rewatched the rather excellent film Event Horizon, and the scene on the bridge when they first board the vessel caught my inspiration. So using some squirts of the hot glue gun and then some Yoohoo glue, I created a nice 
gory explosion of rent flesh in the corner of the office. I painted the bars and the door frame pipes with silver and then gave the meat a layer of corn red. While this dries, time to glue the containers down. A circle of super glue and a central squeeze of Yoohoo, and then I place them to the base and then glued the catwalk across the top and the ladder on the end. So every four and a half inches, there's a level with access to windows to shoot out of. Then, a wash of null oil on the gore to create some deeper levels of shadow, and a dry brush of dragonfire red to highlight the larger lumps and the more prominent strands of tissue. Very nice. Very Hellraiser. And lastly, a little bit of white around the bullet holes and with water, I blended it around to give the hole a little bit of a highlight. And finally, a couple of squares of chicken wire cut out and then inserted into place to act as security mesh in those factory windows. Once the wire ends were inserted into the foam, a dab or two of super glue just to make sure they stay in place, and then a little touch of the Mod Podge to hide the glue. And here we are, a reinforced production plant with dense protective walls. The main factory floor was given over to the hectic production of massive quantities of chemical weapons and other toxic munitions. The main floor has highly placed windows with security bars and mesh to prevent intrusion. The upper floor is an office with more generous windows for additional light to help those managing shipments, orders and inventories. The factory has been chewed up by the savage conflicts raging across this world, and very little of it actually remains. But this relic of armament production still serves in the war, just now as cover for troops seeking to reclaim this world for the Imperium.